Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to run Code Llama on the free version of Google Colab. Right, so we're going to be using the 7B Instruct model version of the Code Llama. And we are going to be doing some demos on that. All right, so the Code Llama is a state of the art large language model that's capable of generating code. All right, and um, it is free for research and it can be used commercially. It is built on top of Llama 2 and we have three um, versions of the model. The Code Llama, that is the fundamental code model. The Codel Llama, that is the one specialized for Python code. Um, and we have the Code Llama Instruct, which is fine-tuned for understanding large language models, instructions and prompt. Right, so we can basically put in a prompt and it will execute the code for that. All right, so um, this is how it works. It was created by Feather Training Llama 2 on specific code specific data set, right? And sampling more data from the same data set for a longer period. All right, so it can also be used for code completion and debugging. It supports many of most popular languages today. So it includes Python, C++, Java, and what you have there. All right. So we uh, have several sizes of the code, 7B, 13B, 13 billion parameters, 34 billion parameters respectively here. So we are actually going to be looking at the 7B struct. All right. OK, so let's get into um that all right so in my call up all right so this seven b here has the capabilities of model capabilities code completion and infilling so we're going to be doing that um aspect of the execution so i'm going to attach the link in my um description so you can grab it so before you start in the runtime you look for the um change one type if you make sure it's on tpu so you select that and you save so you will in your um call up you click on the github um you click on the install so we need to install the hugging face transformers and accelerate Right, the so accelerate library that will manage the memory for the GPU. Right, so when you install, it's going to take a while for it to run, so you give it some time. Right, I think I need to reconnect that. Right, when that is done, we need to import the transformers. All right. Okay, so we need to import transformers and from the transformers, we import the auto tokenizers, we import the transformers and the touch. Okay, so that is going to take care of the data types. All right, so we run it. And then the model that we want to use that's going to be the instruct instruct um, hf 7b instruct so you can run the base as well right and just keep in mind it goes with the memory size right so depending on the if you want to run, run um, larger models you probably need a, a bigger gpu for that all right so we run the we create a, a variable and within that call the tokenizer we have the auto tokenizer so from the pre-trained model we the tokenizer we call it from the pre-trained models right so we run the model within the auto tokenizers and we create a pipe all right so the pipeline is the easiest way to use transformers to build um, a text generation use cases so we can also 
be used for the pipeline can also be used for other classification purposes like image classification and we call in the model model is called to model the touch data type we do it floats and we also do the device map so it actually helps the accelerate library to manage memory for either GPU or CPU. Okay, so it's going to take some time. You just have to wait for it to install. All right, so once it's done, the next thing is to create uh, some variables. We call this a system. So this is this what it's going to control our um, execution, right? It's going to be fed into the system and uh, user input. So this is what we are going to write for the um, system to execute, right? And we're going to put that into a prompt. So for the first scenario, we are going to do um, a code completion we are going to put in um, an instruction for the um, execution of that so we are going to feed that into the prompt so here we have the system and we have the input the user user input so i'm going to say the system you are python expert provide answers in python i'm going to write write a python code that create text in speech text to speech so i'm going to run this right and within this the next step is to create a sequence and um, pass in a pipeline and within that i'm going to put in the prompt all right so you can see we have some parameters that are in here all right so we have the max size the uh to 300 you can vary that the uh, temperature to be 0 0.1 you can change that as well so I'm going to pass the prompt in, I'm going to say run. So when that's done, the next thing is to iterate through the sequence and print the results from the um, sequence. We call that generated text. And so when I run it, as you can see, I told it to I see, write a Python code that creates text to speech functionality in Python. And it's giving me the exact code that I um, actually used that I needed, say so import by TTX3 and the engine. So we call that init and it says print hello world. That is not that bad, All right? So this is something that is test generated. I, something that I was working on previously. Okay. So um, we've seen that part of it. So the next thing is, so I'm going to use the code that I started. I want to see how it's going to complete that. So I'm going to, um, highlight this one out and I'm going to call this in All right so the user input I'm just going to do it one and I'm going to run it okay so when I'm done I'm going to pass it to the sequence All right as a prompt and let's see how it's going to execute that Right, but now it's done. I'm going to run the sequence again. Okay, so I said I needed to. Is it um, what I wanted to do is I want it to detect the code that I'm actually uh, have here, and I want it to fill in that for me. I said so. He's saying I want to add even numbers. Right, so as you can see. Oh, okay. So if it is the render is zero. And B, the remainder is zero. You should add it, All right? And else return only even numbers are allowed. Well, if that is zero. So go to zero, return if, and it's giving me so it's actually writing else statement here. All right, so, all right, so it's giving me a couple of code here. So based on your use cases, you can just uh, pick out where whatever fits your use cases are, right? It's just a good start to start with. So we said dev add 
if a uh, return if the remainder is zero for this for b for a you return a plus b else return only even numbers allowed that is um quite good here all right so you can just play around with it and see how it works here all right so um i hope you like this video don't forget to subscribe and share and see you in the next one